Okay, welcome back. This is a video for section 12.2, which our book calls Tests about a Population Proportion. This is basically where we're doing a hypothesis test for one proportion. So I've written an example right here. The U.S. Department of Health reported that 31% of children in the United States get breakfast. Someone from another country wants to determine if that figure is different for her country. So she takes a sample, and of the 500 children in her sample in her country, 172 of them skipped breakfast. So the question is, what can she conclude? And I wanted to kind of use that language because every single one we've seen so far has used kind of phrases like, is there evidence or something like that. And this, this language also suggests you, you should do a hypothesis test. So just right away, notice that P, I'm going to introduce a little new term, P sub zero, because we're starting to have too many P's. P sub zero is the P of your null hypothesis. So that's a fancy way of saying um, the P in your null hypothesis is 31%. That's what we think is true. P hat is actually from our sample, and notice it's the kind of formula we've seen before. P hat is x over n, 172 over 500 is about 34.4%. So now we do step one of the inference toolbox, P. Notice how I'm, P is the population proportion of those skipping breakfast in, in this other country. That's unknown. Our null hypothesis, the value we think P is, is that P0 data, or the P0 value of 31%. Notice the language used the term different here. We don't really know whether it's going to be more or less in this country. So we're, our alternative hypothesis is P is not equal to 31%. That's why it's a not equal to. And now we're just doing a one proportion Z test or a Z test for one population proportion. Those names are sort of synonymous. Weird. I, for some reason, it's always putting this in the wrong thing. Uh, I did on the previous video, too. It's a, it's a bug. It's not me. I'm not going crazy. It's a bug in the program. Trust me. Trust me. It's not me. Um, now we're at step two, we're checking our conditions here. So we'll assume the 500 children in our simple random sample. When you're doing proportions, it's no longer the same as bigger than 30 problem. It's, is NP and NQ, are those greater than or equal to 10? Notice I'm using the P value here, not the P hat value. It turns out they both are bigger than 10, pretty obviously. So therefore, the sampling distribution of P hat is approximately normal. And the last condition, since there are more than 10 times 500 children in this company, or in this, company, in this country, unless it's a really, really small country, I suppose, we'll assume that every response from the children are dependent of each other. Okay, it's exactly the same conditions we used to check when we were doing conference intervals for proportions. No difference there. Oh, good. The graphic's in the right place. Um, so now here's our new formula. Z equals P hat minus... I'm going to write P, P naught here, or P sub zero. Um, and then over the square root of PQ over N. Here's P hat. Here's our P naught value. Here's the bottom. We get a Z score of 1.644. I want to show you over here in the calculator if you actually can go to one prop Z test. They use the language of P naught. Here's X over N. It's a not equal to problem. And then notice it gives you a P value here of 10%. That's why I wanted, I think it's important for these problems to use P naught. Because this P has nothing to do with the P before, right? This is the P value, as opposed to the P naught value up here. Uh, the graph looks like this. If you shade here and here, you get about 10% uh, on both sides. Both sides combined. And then we just write our last paragraph, which is exactly like what we've been doing with hypothesis tests all along. There is about a 10% chance, this was our P value, remember P was 0.1. Oh, chance of getting a P hat of 172 over 500 or more extreme. And I wrote this because it's not a greater than problem, it's not a less than problem, it's a two-sided, not equal to problem. So that's why you, this language, where this language comes from. There's about a 10% chance of getting a P hat of 172 out of 500 or more extreme due to random chance if P is actually 31%. Since this is likely, right, this is above 5%, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. I think I spelled reject wrong here, but go with me. There is not evidence that the proportion of children skipping at breakfast in this country is different from the United States. Or you could say there is not evidence that P is not 31%. Okay? The double kind of not here is important. And that really that's really it. Just that one example of kind of something we've done before. That really wraps up uh, section 12.2 and chapter 12.